What's really good? good? It's your boy T Bell. It's your girl Danny DMC, and, and welcome, welcome back, back to TNB TV. TNB. It's TNB. It's TNB. TV. What's up, you guys? Y'all see, we got a special guest with us. Hi. Go ahead, introduce yourself. It's Sammy. <laughs> Are you shy? <laughs> no. Yeah, she... <laughs> no, what's up, guys? Right, it's Sammy. You might know me from your favorite Netflix TV show. Okay, pop your shit. That's all I got. Pop your that's, shit. All I got. that's all I got. That's all okay, I got. Okay, okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Self Love Saturday. Uh, today we have a special guest with us. As you can see, we have Sammy. Sammy is going to be giving us a little rundown on her rendition of self love and what she thinks self love is. Yes, we're doing a little Q and A style. We're gonna do a little Q and A <laughs> style. Get to the nitty gritty. But before we get into that, make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. Also turn those post notifications on. Boom! Because you want to stay tapped in with the gang. You, you already know. I'm excited for this video today. Me too. Yes. As you guys can tell from the title below, we're going to be talking a little bit about single life. And basically, obviously, before me and T-Bell were together, we were single. We also had a break <laughs> in our relationship last year, so we were single for about six months. Sammy is currently single. And so we're going to talk about how we take care of ourselves and how we step into self-love and how we prepare ourselves, even though you don't want to be like out looking for a relationship, yeah. but kind of that preparation phase of getting yourself ready and nurturing yourself to allow someone else into your life. Yes. And obviously self-love like plays a huge role in that. You almost just hit me about three times <laughs> with your hands and your mannerisms. So I'm going to need you to calm it down just a little bit. She's going to tell you for Right, yeah, she's going to tell me again. All right, so as we get started and get into it, my first question is, what is your definition of self-love? That's a good question. Ooh, that's hard. I feel like there's not like one single like concrete. Yeah, concrete definition. Mm -hmm. Mine, I think, would just be. Um, oh, that's deep. That's a good question. That's a good question. You gotta kick start it off. Listening to myself. Listening to myself. That's yourself. like my biggest thing is self love because that was really hard for me to learn how to do. Um, and just like when I'm tired and just like need to relax or when I feel something like my intuition and I can feel something really strongly and listening to that, sometimes I would like put all my feelings away and kind of hide my emotions. Yeah. So I think that really like diving deep into my emotions and feeling everything mm -hmm. is a huge part of self-love because yeah. I wasn't loving myself by hiding my emotions and trying to, I'm a, I was a people pleaser way, way too much. And yeah. so I was trying to make everybody else happy instead of myself. Yeah, so kind of internalizing that, making it more about you and like listening yeah. to what you need. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. What would your definition of self-love be? Um, my definition of self-love, I would say, starts with the word self. Um, like I kind of breaking the word down. Like to me, I think the biggest thing I've been taught throughout my life is I only have me and not yeah. in like a sad or pessimistic way, but in a really beautiful way. Yeah. Like I can rely on myself. I can feed myself. I can nurture myself. I can show up for myself. I can fulfill all of my needs and wants on my own. And I don't need anyone else to fill that up. Whether it's a partner, whether it's my family, whether it's friends, whether yeah. it's um, drugs, good. sex, alcohol, whatever. Like I don't need anything but me because I can rely on self. And then in that going to love and giving myself love. So for me, my love is fulfilling my wants and needs yeah. and showing up for myself in the way that makes me feel love. So like something we always joke about and like you know too is like Christmas is my favorite time of the year, right? So if I'm having a really bad day, I'll watch Home Alone. It'll give me yeah. that cozy feeling. And, and it's a random person or a new friend might not know that about me, but like Ty would be like, oh, let's watch Home Alone. <laughs> but that's because I knew myself well enough. I know how to feed me that I was able to teach Tyler how to love me or how to show up for me because I, I had like the resources to be able to do that. So for both of you, like... Wait, wait, wait. What's your definition of self-love? My definition of self-love is just really taking that time to self, um, being still with yourself, turn off the phone, um, really just getting down. Kind of like basically what both of you said. Um, but to go in a little more depth for me individually, it would be more about um, the upkeep of mm. my, my personal image. That that part of my self-love routine is very significant um, from, you know, daily washing my face, brushing my teeth. Like, there were things I, I when I was younger, I just neglected, you yeah. know, as a male. So for me, it's kind of different. I think that's really important to touch on, and that's kind of how Self Love Saturday started too. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to start this conversation about with men. Yeah. And that's something I love about you. Like Tyler does not play when it comes to his self care routine. Like I will literally be in the bed waiting for him, and he, he'll just get home from hooping. He's like, oh, I got a shower. So I'm thinking, oh, 20 minute shower. No, it's never that. He has to do his face routine, his hair routine. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes he'll clean his nails. He has to brush, floss, mouthwash. Like it's a very long shea butters his whole body. Like it's a very long 
routine. I wasn't and, always like that. Yeah, though. and I, I never get upset. I'm always kind of just like in the room, like smiling, like this because is so cute. Help, I love it. Uh, yeah, you help like nurture that a little bit, and you know, that. you know, you you definitely help kickstart that more because. Yeah. Like I said, as a male, I just neglected it so much, and it was pushed to the wayside. Like, oh, that's soft. If you mm, you put lotion yeah. on your mm -hmm. you put lotion on your abs or your back, oh, you you gay or you know, like it's just so crazy. many weird stigmas with with everything. So that is crazy. I yeah, think about. that's really why I wanted to start the whole self love to vibe change that and change that narrative. Yeah. And my my next question for y'all is more so what is your your daily routines like in a you know a quick little answer like what do you do daily to, to help show with love yourself? For yourself yeah, yeah with yourself love you go first you go first this oh, me? time okay. first last time okay I would say um, recently I've been working out like every single day which has been really good because. I think working out is kind of a complex thing. Being a plus size woman, we're kind of that that narrative has always been shoved down my throat. Like you're fat, so you have to work out. You're fat, so you have to lose weight. You're fat, so you have to change your body. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of plus size people we hate working out. We hate the gym because it triggers us. There's this like negative relationship with the gym. And for me, I really want to change that and remind myself when I go to the gym, I'm not showing up for anyone else. I'm not showing up to lose weight. I'm showing up for me. I'm showing up for my mental health, yeah. my physical health, for my beautiful. heart to move my body. That's beautiful. So that's been like and a really big thing. It makes me feel good. Another thing too that's been really nice at our new place is I swim a lot. Like I go mm -hmm. in the pool. That's that's a really like I connect with myself a lot in water. I feel really at peace and like kind of in a meditative state. Yeah. That's me too though. The water thing. Yeah. I am so connected. I'm such a water baby. I have to be in water yeah. all the time. We're gonna swim after this. Yes. So <laughs> the minute I wake up, I have to get in the shower. Like no matter what, yeah. that's like my. You first love thing. your shower. That I is love dope. Like hearing y'all say what y'all do first in the in the day. Like that it's is so dope. Funny. Here. I can't wait to keep doing this with more people because mm -hmm. I. It's intriguing to hear. So, yeah, yeah go on. My fault. Yeah, go that's on. the first thing I have to do. I have to shower. I have to brush my teeth. Like, I don't know. I have to brush my teeth. Um, I take my dogs for a walk. I come in. I usually, like, light an incense or light a candle. I'm definitely big on scents. I think that was something that I learned in psychology, literally in, in college. That's um, <laughs> And you always light incense. That's what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I like incense. Senses. But I learned in college that certain senses, I mean, certain smells can, um, like, help things. with your anxiety. Mm -hmm. And when you activate certain parts of your brain, it also like releases different parts of anxiety. So it, it kind of is like, um, kind of like a prerequisite to like mask before I can even get anxious in the day, like little tiny things like that. Just to, just to like reassure myself that I'm okay. Yeah. I think my last thing I want to ask really is, um, when it comes down to your self love routine yourself, how is it implementing it among other people in mm -hmm. other relationships in your life? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good question. Like how, how is it showing them that you love yourself mm -hmm. so they can love you the, accordingly? Yeah. Yeah. I'm very vocal. Yeah. I'm very, very vocal. And I know that's not easy for a lot of people. Um, but that's something that I've learned over time because of like how I said, I used to internalize a lot of things and in the end it would just I would just have these outbursts of anger and I seemed like such an angry, confront confrontational person to literally everyone around me. Um, so it got tiring, you know, when you're out with somebody who's always confrontational or always like just yeah, trying exhausting. to pick fights. It's exhausting. It's exhausting for me and it's exhausting for other people. Yeah, I feel that and I internalize a lot of things from my childhood that I had gone through also. So it was a lot that I had to work through going through therapy. And um, I think the hardest part for me was opening up to people and like telling them like, okay, this is a trigger for me because I went through it when I was a kid. Or this is a trigger for me because this is what I went through in my last relationship. So I'm very, very open and honest. But also I have that kind of boundary and barrier that like, okay, if I tell you this and you still do it anyway, I don't need you. Yeah. Like that's it for me. Um, and that was also something that I've definitely learned in the past year and a half. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the way that I do it. I'm very open and honest with my friends and people that I've just met. It's a lot easier for me now because I do practice it all the time. Yeah. That even like people I've just met, if we have like plans to hang out, I'll text them and be like, hey, my anxiety is really bad, like rain check. Yeah. And they'll be like, okay, if they never text me again to hang out again, I don't get, I don't care. Because you showed up for yourself I showed first. up for myself. Yeah. And if you can't understand that and you can't respect that as somebody who wants to be my friend, then we should never have even crossed paths in the first place. Yeah. That 100%. might have been the golden token right there that you just gave for the whole video. Yeah. 
beautiful. Yeah, and that was, that was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That she showed up for herself first. Yeah. And Even that if that it, doesn't like feed other people's, mm -hmm. you're feeding yourself. Yeah. That's okay if it's misunderstood. But it also yeah. has taken a very long time to get to, to, get to that, that point. Place yeah. A hundred percent. Like I don't want. I, don't, I don't also don't want to ever make it seem like this has just been like a woke up yeah. and I was like, you know what? Like I'm 27. I've yeah. been working at this for a yeah. very, very long time. Yeah. So don't ever like, you know, get mad at yourself. Yeah. Or the journey. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Sammy and I are both women that have gone through a lot and we are healing and growing and evolving and we're really open to which like- Which never stops. Yeah, which never stops. But I think when you <clears throat> reach a certain age, Sammy's 27, I'm 28, I feel like you get to a point where you really want that for yourself. Like you no longer feel comfortable kind of living in your trauma or like not being your best self. You really want to grow up and evolve and like become the best you. And I feel I feel that for both of us. Yeah. I feel like we both gotten better at communication, verbalizing ourselves, not like overreacting a ton although you know, it still we happens still do. you know yeah <laughs> we have, we're similar in some ways <laughs> you have those moments yes you know i think it's really important to first learn how to show up for yourself so that way the communication is great communicating to someone hey this is what i need this is how i need you to show up for me but also just like leading by example so like for if sure. you see how i treat myself you see i treat my yeah, body yeah, good i treat yeah, my yeah. mind good i treat my spirit good i treat my home good me. Don't, I'm, I'm setting a precedent. I'm showing you how I deserve to be treated and what I will and won't tolerate. Man. And if I treat myself this way, I expect you to treat me this way and I expect you to treat Yo, yourself that way. Now that I hear you say that out loud, I can feel like that's probably, uh, probably why a lot of men disrespect women. Mm. Off the strength that they don't know how to internally 100%. sit down 100%. and love themselves 100%. the correct way. So sometimes they'll say or do things that are like aggressive just in that like you know that male frequency mm -hmm. yeah in that ego and they'll forget that like there's another side to this femininity a thousand percent. And, spectrum yeah and i feel like when you're especially when you're younger if you're with someone that's not as strong or confident it's easier to get away with stuff ty and i got together so young tyler and i met when i was 20 and he was 21. we started dating when i was like 23 or 24 and we've grown up like we were kids when we met and we've evolved so much and i feel like we've had the opportunity to grow into our best selves and like develop our self care and our self love throughout our relationship. And I feel like it's been amazing, but it's been hard too, because when you don't already have that like kind of fullness before meeting someone, it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of step into that with a partner. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like one thing I want to touch on in this video is like, a big part of building that up before being with someone, which I feel like you can speak to because yeah. you are older, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And you've had relationships that you've left and, and been able to be by yourself and grow from them yeah. at an age where, like I was just saying, we're more healed, we're more mm -hmm. evolved. Like, you Absolutely. know how to show up and kind of heal yourself and then prepare for the next relationship. Yeah. So, like, what would you say about that? Like, what what is that process like for you? Do you like the fact that you're able to now be an adult and make yourself whole before being in a relationship? Do you think that's less challenging than trying to figure it out with another person? Of course. I definitely, I don't think that it's a necessity. I think that there are many people who I've seen grow in relationships and grow together um, and grow through things, which I think is beautiful, yeah. but it's not for everybody. Yeah. Like for myself, um, I've been in relationships that were horrible and in the moment you're like, okay, I can work through it, I can process through it, but you really can't. Like, yeah. like my last relationship, there was no way that would ever work unless we were apart. Yeah. And so like being like single and being alone and growing through it has been so hard. And of course, like going through the healing process alone is horrible. Yeah. You know, it's but challenging. I also took like took note to myself, like instead of texting one of my friends, like, hey, can you come over? or calling my parents or calling my sister or calling somebody. I would just sit and really like feel my emotions and go through it on my own. And rely on and yourself, rely on myself. which is Absolutely. such an important process. And that's process. super important yeah. because I feel like what I also did a lot was I would retreat to the people that I loved and cared about, which is not a bad thing, but I would also take into consideration all of how they felt yeah. about mm. my situation. Over yes. and that over doesn't how help. You felt. Yeah, yeah, and, it and would sometimes be like, other outside perspectives other, don't always apply no, to you, and they shouldn't have to, especially when you're going through healing on your own. Yeah, so hard. like I, I realized that because I would hear certain things, like in conversation with for, with my parents, for example, and of course they would be biased and they would take my side on certain things, and I'd be like, okay, wait, I shouldn't have even told them this because, like, realistically, they don't know the situation, they don't know this, they don't know that, they don't know how I'm feeling, genuinely nobody could ever know how I was feeling. So I was like, I need to learn how to actually process these things alone and go through them alone and work on them. And then it made me stronger in the end to the point where once I was finally able to start dating and start talking to people, like, one little thing that I would catch on that, like, I would have let slip a million times before, one little thing that I catch on, like, peace. Yeah. I don't need this. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to put in all this extra work in the beginning 
If yeah. there's so much extra work in the beginning, it's like, what am I doing yeah, to myself? What am I here point? for? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I needed to find somebody who is not on the same level mentally. Well, who's because who's done that healing. Yeah, yeah, who's done that healing, but who can also like, who can also own up to it. Yeah. I need someone who's also able to um, take accountability. Yes. Like, okay, this is, uh, this is something that I'm actually still healing and trying to grow from. And I would love if you could help me with that. Yeah. Bam. I'm and down. you have the clarity now to see yeah. that, which I think is so important. I think that was a big thing with me and T-Bell too, is that when we broke up last year and we had that break, the reason really that happened is because we, like I said, we were kids, we grew up, you know, together and we needed a moment by ourselves. And Sammy said it perfectly. Like when she was with her ex, like she had to separate. Tyler and I were at a point where we had to separate. I needed to evaluate my life by myself. Mm -hmm. He needed to evaluate his life by himself. And I think what we both found being alone is that we needed that time to build ourselves up, but it also gave us clarity that there's no one else we'd rather be with. Mm -hmm. Like we, we are willing to put in the work and do what we have to do to grow together because we are in a place where we are healed and we are whole now and we can come together and be better. We can be more accountable. We have yeah. more clarity and our relationship, I always say has been so different since, we, since we've been back together. It's almost like a new relationship and we needed that time. And I think we were both scared of it. Like I would always say like, oh, us breaking up, it's over. Like we're done forever. But I was wrong and you can't like set this kind of like, you know, I'm a controlling person, but you can't plan this out. You can't plan relationships out. But the best thing that you can do is heal yourself and give yourself that self-love and show up for yourself in that way. So I'm so glad we were able to do this video. Yeah. I'm and like talk about all this. I yeah. feel like these conversations are so important. So it. great. You know, yeah, as so we come into a close, just understanding that, you know, self-love in this video, we really touched on accountability and having clarity of your own definition of self-love and then being able to give that to other people. So by showing up for yourself first, that's like key It's like always. learning self love first, whether you're single, whether you're in a relationship, like taking time for yourself, if you're in a relationship and like Sammy said too, like if you're not in a relationship doing that healing and building so that you can have the clarity and consciousness to tell someone, Hey, this is what I'll accept. This is what I won't accept. Yeah. And just always showing up for you. I think is really important. Mm -hmm. You have anything you want to say as we close? Then? No, I don't think that, I think that was it. The thing that I, I think this is talk show too, it's though. beautiful that you guys like, um, were able to come back together and like work through together that doesn't happen for everybody yeah. i just want to say yeah no, <laughs> no they, one they, that not happen for them that. like they they're really special and i love and i love watching them together and being their friend and being around it but i will say like that's not for everybody either yeah. like don't i also don't want people to watch this and have expectations like oh yeah okay we broke up because it yeah. was really toxic and unhealthy yeah but like we'll get back together to be fair when we broke up like i thought like we that. were done like it was a yeah. wrap and, and so i went through that pain oh, like yeah, i went we, through we ain't gonna go too deep into yeah that. we, we're gonna make a video yeah we're gonna make a video talking about this because it, it's a really important topic like we always say make sure you like subscribe comment below also turn those post notifications on who else you want to stay tapped in the gang obviously you guys already know we really hope you enjoyed this video our second video of the self-love saturday series we're gonna be doing all month and maybe even more if you guys really like it we love these like q a style videos i think it's really important to have these types of conversations and like we always say and we said in our last video we want to bring you guys resources so like mm -hmm. we want you to walk away from our videos feeling like you gained something and so hopefully you guys feel that way today invite some fellas man we yeah need to get more yeah men we need to add men to the self-love conversation we really do so that's definitely a big point that we're trying to do here so we got to keep it going thank you guys we'll see you guys soon Bye. peace